Welcome back to the channel. So this is a little bit of a video on how I ended up having to replace my oven and stove with a shorter unit so that I could have more clearance between the bottom of the oven and the top of the inverter. As you can see here we have very minimal clearance between the bottom of this cabinet and where the oven would sit and the top of the inverter. So what I have done was I sold my old oven range assembly on Craigslist and then I put in some more cabinet pieces and then this is just going to be a removable panel that fills the gap between my new uh, low profile oven. It's actually, I think it's called a 17 inch oven where the original one was 21 inches. It's not a perfect match color wise as well as the pattern of the wood. This is a piece of oak. It's, I just didn't have much success finding any kind of short piece of lumber at local stores, so I just used a piece of oak plywood that I had on hand. It does the job, although it doesn't look all that great, but at least it's finished with some stain and some nice clear coat. So it serves the purpose. And here's my new oven. This is a Furion. This is what Northwood is now using from the RV factory, although they aren't using the short one, they're using the 21 inch. This is the 17 inch. So the difference is that the oven isn't quite as tall. And there's a removable top that goes on, which has the, the burner tray and a cover that's inside my house. I'll get that installed once I get the entire unit mounted. Once I have the oven slid partially into place, I'll reach back here and connect my wires for the knob backlighting as well as the oven light. So white is ground and then my power feed coming from the RV, I used a green wire and that connects to the black wire. Then we'll go ahead and slide it the rest of the way in place. Now we'll make my propane line connection. I might slide the oven back out just a little bit and put a little bit more of a bend in that propane line so that it lines up better. As you can see it's kind of over to the left just a little bit. and It might be just a little bit on the high side too. So that'll be really easy to fix. I've made some minor adjustments. Now it lines up much better. And we'll use two wrenches here to tighten this. I tightened it up fairly snug, so next thing we'll do is a leak test. The range is held in place with four screws. We have one on each side at the front and then one on each side at the back. Let's tighten the screws so that that outer le ledge right there tightens up right against the countertop. On the front edge of the stove cover we have a little tab here on each side. Those tabs fit into a little notch right on the front lip. So we'll lift this up at a bit of an angle, line up those two front tabs and those notches, and then just sort of angle it down and then push down on the back and it's dropped in place. It's a really nice stove cover. Another thing I like about this range top compared to the original one that was in this rig is it's totally flush with the countertop. The other range that I had, it had a big dished cover that was about that tall. Another nice feature here, we have backlighting. So all the knobs light up blue. This oven has a window in it. And then we also have a light inside the oven all the way at the back there. Overall I'm pretty happy with the appearance. It looks like it's going to be a really nice range. The cover just flips back and it's actually spring-loaded. And then it provides a nice backsplash too. My old oven, I sold that on Craigslist in less than a day. It always amazes me the kinds of things that people will buy if I list them on Craigslist. 
Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about this range, drop those in the comments below.